please welcome Keith Suda. Activate. On a brisk fall day in 1992, my best friends and I walked into every radio station in Bozeman and asked for a show. That's how you do it, right? We'd been, we were sophomores in high school, we'd recently formed a comedy team in our own non-profit theater production company. I mean, who wouldn't want teenage dorks like that on their radio station? That's the response we got. Till we went to KGLT, the college radio station, we were handed an application by their general manager, who probably had no idea that we were in high school, and we never left. From 1992 to today, some configuration of these guys and I have been doing the coffee show on KGLT. We've been making a nuisance out of ourselves on Wednesday afternoons from 3 to 6 p.m. for 25 years. It's amazing the station kept us around at all. No time! No time! When we started on Friday mornings, our primary interest was performing old-time radio. We'd grown up with tapes of classic comedians and so scripts in hand, we waited until the 5 o'clock a.m. hour when people might be listening and perform sketches that we had written usually the night before. We even did three years of variety shows during the Christmas stroll on this stage. That's us 20 years ago doing a live radio play. <laughs> A lot of life intrudes over two decades. Friends grow up, move away, move back, and eventually the coffee show has evolved into, well, what, whatever it is now. And uh, Maybe that's why uh, we have won the Bozeman Magazine Reader's Poll for favorite radio show. There's even a fancy graphic coming up in a second to prove it. We also play a lot fewer show tunes and television theme songs than we used to, so that might help. Uh, but no more sketches, no more variety shows. Years of life kept turning, and I gave up dreams of theater and performing in 1999 because not long after that I fell in with a bad crowd. Movie makers. <laughs> See? Yes, some friends and I embarked on years of making low-budget movies that look slightly higher budget than they were. <laughs> We even had one released on DVD nationwide by Lionsgate, but I need to warn you, do not watch this movie. Forget I mentioned it. I just needed to fill a slide. Don't look this up when you get home. After this movie was released, uh, we got an agent, and the agent uh, tried to force us into a terrible contract for our next project. We fired the agent, and I spent years writing scripts that no one would read, much less produce. <laughs> In 2010, through a series of coincidences involving vampires and coffee, I became friends with Ryan Casabaugh, the white hot dynamo of pure entertainment you witnessed just moments ago. We quickly found a kinship revolving around our love of old time comedy teams like Laurel and Hardy and the Marx Brothers and the fact that deep down we are both carved out of pure 1938. <laughs> Bad influence that he is, Ryan took advantage of me while I was high on Vicodin after an emergency room visit. Long story, again involving vampires, and coerced me to audition for a play, and thus my tenure absence from the stage ended, and I never left there either. In 2012, Ryan and I embarked on the most creatively fulfilling project of my entire life, and the genesis was really simple. I was at a party with the Verge Theater folks and heard that they were dark during the summer, staging no shows for several months because their creative director had the summer commitment out of town. Possessing the charm and foresight that only several gin and tonics can imbue, I corralled one of their board members and told them Ryan and I would be happy to stage live radio plays. No costumes, no sets, no budget. Had I asked Ryan about this, well, no. But I figured he'd make the face he's making now. And he did. Radio theater is a medium of pure imagination, but I thought audiences would love to see all the madness that goes into a radio play. Our cast members frequently double, triple, or septuple different characters. And it's wonderful to hear a marching army of dowels, or find out that an oncoming steam train is a box of macaroni and cheese. <laughs> We said, we'll call it something like, I don't know, Don't Close Your Eyes, and we'll come up with a better title later, and we promptly got too busy to do that, and so now we're stuck with it. Which I'm pretty sure is how the Beatles ended up the Bee Apples. 
Our most dangerous decision was also our most spur of the moment one. We couldn't do an episodic series because we knew no one would come to week four if they'd missed week one. So we decided we'd just have to come up with a brand new standalone show every week. That's how they did it back in the day. We'll do that too. Of course, those old time shows had multiple writers and that was their only job. But too late to look back, we take turns writing a brand new one hour show every week. While the first show is running, the other writer writes the next script. We have an initial read-through on Monday, we have a dress rehearsal on Thursday, and we perform Friday and Saturday for the East Coast and the West Coast. <laughs> Next week, the process begins again for the other writer for seven weeks. We collaborate on the last one. I mean, left to my own devices, I won't write a 120-page screenplay, which is about the average length, in a year. Every summer, Ryan and I write 200 pages each. But the greatest joy for me is just having the material performed and performed by the amazing, talented people who are crazy enough to join us on this insane artistic endeavor. We've staged over 40 original shows running the gambit from science fiction, old-time comedy, steampunk, mystery, westerns, both funny and serious. Always with humor and action appropriate for the whole family. We've had story of a boxing underdog who defeats his opponents by having the saddest life story. A Jekyll and Hyde tale where every character has taken the potion. A scary tale of a radio broadcaster reporting live from an ancient Mayan temple when all of a sudden a collapse traps him inside. I, I could really honestly go on all night enumerating them all, but I suggest that you just avail yourself of your favorite podcasting off app and download them for free. We're adding new ones every two weeks also appreciate a rated review. <laughs> I'm just so happy that I can share my lifelong passion with everyone in the audience and who performs these shows. I hope you can join us on June 10th as we start our sixth season of Creative Insanity at the Verge Theatre. And until then, as I say every episode, don't close your eyes.